Welcome to another edition of the Subodh Management of Institute lecture series. I'm Professor Dr. Jyotsna Mehta, and I'm going to be taking up one aspect of the paper Performance Management and Retention Strategies, which is M431. We are going to be talking about behavioral performance management, which means we are going to be discussing the various principles of learning, the theories of learning, reinforcement and punishment. And we're going to understand how the organizational reward system works. This particular module shall be discussed in three parts. So welcome to the first part where we're going to be discussing both the principles of learning and the theories of learning. First of all, what exactly is learning? Learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior or knowledge that occurs as a result of experience. And because you want to adapt to the changes that are taking place in the world around you. There is, of course, a difference between learning and performance. Because performance is the behavior you actually show. But learning is inferred from performance. But it is not, performance is not an accurate measure of learning, how much you have learned. The principles of learning can be divided into these main principles. The first is readiness. How ready is the learner to accept new knowledge? Does he want to learn and acquire new knowledge? Exercise. That means we need to be flexible and adaptable in our understanding of concepts, in understanding and accepting new concepts. Then the effect of learning, the impact it will have on our already formed views and ideas and knowledge base and on how we will behave in the future. The primacy effect, which means that we tend to learn best what we learn earliest. Then comes recency, which is again something which is going to happen when we are going to be able to, uh, you know, sort of the more recently we have uh, read about something, we will be able to learn that better. Then comes intensity. How intensely you have been given the information that you're going to learn. So that means it depends upon how it was presented to you and how you were, uh, you know, in the state of mind that you wanted to learn it. So we are going to learn it, you know, the learning just before an examination is more intense and therefore you're going to be able to learn up things faster requirements. We will learn things that we probably think we need for our lives faster but if we feel that you know it's a skill we really don't use in our lives so we are just going to very often you know you say Ki ye mere kab kaam and we don't want to learn that and then freedom we learn far better when we are free to learn when we are feeling independent and we are feeling that we'll be able to learn on our own but if there's a pressure then sometimes we will not be able to learn so much so there are Five main theories of learning, behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism, experientialism, and social and contextual. We are going to study only three of these in greater detail. We are going to study behaviorism, which is the stimulus response. Cognitivism, which deals with how the information and knowledge flows. Constructivism, which is the mental models. Experientialism, which is the learning experience. And social and contextual, where we learn from others. So we are going to focus on the cognitive theory, the social learning theory, and the conditioning theory, or which is a part of, of course, the behavioral aspect of how we learn. So this is going to be the three major types of behavioral learning. The first is classical conditioning. The second we will talk about is operant conditioning. And the third is observational learning. So classical conditioning implies a neutral stimulus associated with a natural response. Of course, we are going to go into the details of this, but it is something that we learn as the classical conditioning of how we are able to associate 
a neutral stimulus with a natural response. The second is occurrent conditioning. And we are going to talk about it as instrumental conditioning also, a response which is increased or decreased because of punishment or because of some reward or reinforcement. And finally, we are going to talk about observational learning, which is learning which occurs through the observation of others, imitating your role models and learning from how they are behaving. So let's come to the first, which is classical conditioning. This is an experiment which is performed by a Russian physiologist called Ivan Pavlov. And he said that when he noticed actually that his dog, when an unconditional stimulus like food was given to the dog, the dog would salivate. And a neutral stimulus, like let's say a, you know, a whistle. If you blow the whistle, the dog would not really give any response. But if they started blowing the whistle just before food was presented to the dog, it was noticed after a point of time that the dog learned to associate the blowing of the whistle to the food being served and therefore started salivating even when only the whistle was being blown and this was the simplest form of classical conditioning that we can understand and it's actually something like that little reaction of students when the final bell for indicating that the day is done in school rings and the anticipation towards the ending of the school begins even before that. So we talk about now, again, let's again go through it. Unconditioned stimulus is food. Salivation is unconditioned response. Bell, no response. Then during conditioning, we have the bell and then the food is served, which is an unconditioned stimulus and salivation, which is the unconditioned response. But after the dog is conditioned into knowing that the bell leads to serving the food, he starts salivating or giving a conditional response to a conditional stimulus. Then comes the operant condition. Specific consequences are associated with voluntary behavior. So this is a study which is attributed to B.F. Skinner and it is also sometimes called instrumental conditioning and it shows how, you know, there are mice in the cage and there were several levers and they would press these levers as part of their play activity and one of these levers would press and then food would come so they would understand that a light would go on and then there is going to be food if I press this lever and they learned this and now instead of touching the other levers they would only press on this one but sometimes we need to introduce punishment then what he did was he gave a mild shock and a red light would go on sometimes to this lever so this now this mouse who would continuously keep pressing the lever hoping for more and more food understood that if he did it you know many times sometimes that particular lever would give a shock and that was the punishment and now he was wary of going near that particular lever this we call as operant conditioning there is a difference between the two classical conditioning we associate an involuntary response to a stimulus in operant conditioning we are going to associate a voluntary behavior to a consequence it could be reward it could be punishment now cognitive learning theory so that was about the behavioral now we come to the cognitive learning theory cognitive learning theory is a broad theory and it helps to explain how mental processes are going to be influenced by both the internal as well as the internal fa external factors and they will create learning in the organization this theory is the cognitive learning theory is attributed to an educational psychologist called Jean Piaget who was a French national and it basically talks about how when a stimulus is presented to a, a cognitive process is going to take place in the individual and then a response will be generated so we have based upon the mental processes by which the learners take in they will interpret they will store and then they will retrieve the information.
Lastly, we are going to talk about social learning theory. The social learning theory states that people learn from one another by observation, by imitation, and by modeling their behavior on somebody else's behavior. This is often referred to as a bridge behaviorist and cognitive learning theories because it encompasses attention, memory, and the concept of motivation. So what do you understand? People learn through observation. So if they see the mother making their hair, a little girl will go to her doll and try to braid her hair. The second is mental states are important to learn. The more happy and open your mind is, the more you will grasp and understand, which means a positive environment in childhood will be so conducive for a child having good learning. And then lastly, learning does not lead to behavior change. Unfortunately, there is going to be a gap between what I know and how I'm going to behave. And so this is not necessarily leading to behavior change. So the social learning theories basically talks about attention, what you observed, you focus on that stimulus, you retain the connections that you've made. That is, you've seen somebody behaving in a certain manner, you've retained that, then you're going to practice it. You're going to try it on in the next round. And then you find that it gives you rewards, so it gives you motivation. And therefore, you have learned now that this is the way that you're going to behave because it seems to be getting you the results that you so desire. One of the very popular theories of uh, social learning is uh, Bandura's theory. And this theory talks about a three-way connection between the personal factors which exist in the individual, the environmental factors which are available in the surroundings of that individual, which will be interacting with the behavior of the individual. And therefore, these three factors will lead to how an individual actually behaves. So that was all about today. We talked about the theories of learning and the concept of learning. I shall be back with the second part of the same module. See you all then. Thank you so much.